2021 being the year that time stood still, some people have had no choice but to keep moving forward, seizing their ultimate opportunity in lockdown. Join us in this brand new documentary series as we take a deep dive into the intricate lives of a variety of COVID's victors. Camera, action. Each episode, we invest get an exciting range of individuals. I know, we still haven't gone for a beer. Exploring how the trauma of lockdown can be transitioned into total triumph. If you know you're winning, stay on that path. This is Exceeding Expectations. Start, Dave. Yeah, I'll start. My name's David Hayes. My name's Cam. I'm just so proud of you, what you're doing. I'm proud of us. I've had like the most amazing nine months. It gave me purpose, it gave me drive, it made me realise who I was. I'm pretty sick. Prison don't define you. You can do and be whoever you want to be. from prison in July 2020. I'd done three and a half years. Well, I got seven years and done three and a half years for aggravated burglary. Um, I'm now a film and media arts production student. Fell into a life of crime and drugs and I guess it spiraled out of control for many years. People who are going in the same direction as you, people who want the same things as you, those are the relationships that, that you need to hold on to and, and try and nurture because if you really want to change, it's only by surrounding yourself with positive people that you're going to be able to do that. During his time in prison, Cam grew close to one of his fellow inmates in particular, David. I'm 36 years old and I'm a former prisoner. I was released in 8th of April last year, so that was 2020. I've had a bit of an interesting background. I come from a military family. Um, I was in boarding school from the ages of 6 to 18. Went to university, um, ended up working in the city as a forex trader. And then things just started going wrong for me. And I ended up, ended up in prison. Thankfully, my, my family did come to see me, um, but I lost a lot of friends, um, a lot of opportunities. I missed sort of the first few years of my niece and nephew growing up as well, which was, which was horrible to see. Just like the rest of the world, over the last year, David and Cam have utilised the video chat app, Zoom, and have decided to set up a video call to see how each other are getting on. Um, yeah, we both based, basically both met in HMP Guys Marsh. Um, we were opposite each other on the wing. Um, and we just sort of gravitated towards each other. There was just something about each other that we noticed that was different from every, everyone else on the wing. Um, and once we started talking, we just realised this connection that we wanted to do something that's much bigger than prison, much bigger than anything we've done before. <laughs> Within prisons, mental health doesn't always get the attention it deserves, with 7 out of 10 prisons studied, leaving men feeling they waited too long to seek mental health care. For me, I, I remember seeing David on a wing and I, I thought to myself, why is this guy in prison? He doesn't look like the guy that should be in prison. He was so well spoken. I could tell that, you know, he'd come from a good background and that kind of intrigued me. And I remember the first time I talked to him, he was he was a little bit reluctant, you know, to, to open up to me. But I think as we we conversated more, I think he kind of warmed towards me and he saw that I'm not a big black scary guy, you know, with scars on his face and stuff like that. And I'm just like a normal down to earth kind of guy. And I, I used to see him walking around um, in his shorts and his flip flops like he was on a beach in Hawaii and just thinking, look at this guy, you know, like, I want to be like this guy, like, although he's in prison, he's, he's not here, you know, he's in his, in his own world, in his own lane, and he's doing his own thing, and that really inspired me. David has kept himself busy whilst the rest of the world stood still, with David's last 12 months being extremely inspirational. Yeah, life's good. 
who I've started working for PRS now, Penal Reform Solutions, um, just doing some consultancy work. So basically what we're doing, working for the Spectrum teams, contacting people that have been um, in prison, and basically just trying to capture their journey through like their, what they've experienced in mental health um, through the criminal justice system, um, which is you know, it's really good at the moment, it's just giving these guys a voice. And I also do a lot of um, paddleboarding, getting outside, which is great. The, the sport hasn't even sort of reached the peak of what we can do for the touring and exploration sites. So I want to try and push that. I have all these sort of great plans for the sport. I mean, I'm, in June, I'm paddleboarding the four longest lakes in the UK. And then going to try and roll that out across Europe. In the summer of 2022, I'm going to be the first person to suck the length of the Skeleton Coast. 2024, I'm planning on doing the River Nile, but 2023, we're hopefully going to do it in Mount Everest. Don't worry, we got we got so much projects coming up, you know. Um, I definitely want to come and film your challenges that you're going to be doing um, yeah. with the Free Lakes and anything else that you got coming up. I'll, I'll definitely try my best to make sure that I can come and support you in any aspect that I can, you know. It's four lakes, but four lakes. Okay, sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> As of 2016, one in five people live in prison have found a job which they have held for six months or more. For me, all the prison staff were telling me I'm better off inside. I was like, don't be stupid. It's like, you know, I can, even if I can't go to the shops or pubs and see my friends, whatever, I still, I can go on the internet. I can do all these things that I've started, I've dreamt about doing. I can sit there and plan these things. And I felt, I felt like at first I thought it was going to be a hindrance coming out in a COVID world, but when I actually came out to it, I think it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. I remember that I, I went out for a, a interview at a university. So they let me out for the day and I went to Bristol. And I remember being at Bristol train station and it was the most apocalyptic scene I'd ever felt in my life. I felt like I was in a movie because there was nobody around and over the tannoy was just notices about COVID-19 and to make sure you're social distancing and and to be careful about um, congregating with people. And I was like, oh my God, is this what, what the world is turning into? Like it's turned into a horror movie, you know? But um, I'm grateful for it. You know, today I look back on it and I just think that, you know, um, me coming out and having my goals and my aspirations, I could have been so easily sidetracked if everything was open. And I started seeing all old um, associates and stuff like that, it could have, changed my way of thinking. So for me, I think it was a blessing. When I, when I look back on it, I just think like it set me up so well to be like in the position that I am in now. Like I've had like the most amazing nine months. Um, and I don't think that my, my journey would have been heading in this direction without the lockdown. I think I was back in my local area for eight weeks. But in that eight weeks, all I done was get up at five o'clock in the morning, get on my bike, ride to work, work till five o'clock and ride home. I didn't see no one. I didn't spend no money. Uh, I left my job with like 8,000 pounds in my pocket. And I was like, I would have never been able to do that because I'd have been out partying and wanted to, to socialize and like make sure that I'm looking nice and fly for girls and all, all of these other distractions would have come in the way. It gave me that time to sort of readjust to life and think about where I've been and the journey I'm on and where I want to go to and just sort of reevaluate everything. I think if I went straight into everything full steam ahead, I probably had a nervous breakdown sort of down the line. Journeys like this aren't successful without a reliable support network. Dr. Sarah Lewis has worked closely with both Cam and David on their road back to reality. So I met David at a kind of charity event we were doing um, that involved yoga. Uh, I met him and just the perseverance that he had, how organised he was, how um, dedicated he was to that. He was just a stronger version of himself. He just has got a fire in his belly that he and he wants to change the world. And I have no doubt he will, no doubt at all. Cam is a colleague, you know, he's a, he's a professional in his own right. He's a consultant. He, um, he's a colleague of mine that works works with PRS, but also he's a friend. He um, supports me, and I think I think that was that was probably not what I thought I was signing up for. I think I went into went into prisons thinking, right, I'm going to be there. I'm going to support people. I'm going to help them change. And I didn't 
really ever anticipate that they would they would then return that 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 kind of support I guess um, in me. So you know, a friend, a colleague, a brother, can is can is can. When I met this woman, I didn't realize how much she was going to change my life. But she is one of the most compassionate, most caring, most honest individuals that I've ever met, and I feel that. Um, I'm blessed to have her in my life. She, she's one of my best friends. Like I said, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for her, you know? So um, I work alongside her proudly because like I said earlier, I want to give the same opportunities that were forwarded to me to other people who are desperate because a lot of people are desperate. A lot of people want to change. They just don't know how to, you know? Mm. So if, if I can do what Sarah done to me for one individual, then I'd be a really happy man. I say she puts everybody else before herself, like, and that's what I just love about her. Just, yeah, she said she's just, she's amazing. Sarah, I love you. <laughs> With lockdown coming to an end, David and Cam are now keen to use his upcoming months to work on their future ambitions. For me, it's gotta be the BAFTAs, right? Nice. It's gonna be the BAFTAs, man. Like, before I come out of jail, I said I'm gonna have a BAFTA. Within five years of coming out of prison, I'm gonna have a BAFTA, and that's still my aim at the moment. I remember sitting in jail, just thinking, like, how did my life all go wrong? What was it? And it was that loss of connection to adventure. And I realised when I did these things, it's what really made me come alive. It's what it gave me purpose. It gave me drive, and it made me realise who I was. So I sort of made a vow to myself, like when I get out, I'm going to continue to push these adventures. I'm still waiting for you to get your own show, right? <laughs> We've seen Bear Grylls get it. We've seen all these other naturists get it. It's time for David Hayes to get his own show. You know, if there was an opportunity to get my own platform to do this and, and share the story, that'd be awesome. But at the end of the day, if I can just make a living from going around paddleboarding the world, then I'll be a very happy man. I think more than for anything else, just for myself to, I guess, come to terms with the fact that, you know what, you've always had this in you, you were always this person, but it, it took this situation to bring it out of you. And, you know, this support network to help you to become the person that you've always known you could be. You're doing well. So are you. Yeah.